Let's go to questions. Buzz, I know a couple of uh, times when we talked, you, you kind of closed out the press conference saying that you, you know the guys will shoot better. Did you see this kind of performance coming this week? Um, I, I, I said that not to motivate them. I, I said that I, I do think that at some point it will go back to the mean. I don't think that we're great shooters. That's not what I'm saying. But I don't think we're what the numbers have been thus far. Um, obviously, it looks a lot better when you make shots and you make shots at the rate that we did. I thought I was a little nervous, to be honest, in the first half. We, they only fouled us three times. And as you know, we're, we're very dependent on free throw makes to skew our points per possession. We talked a little bit about it at halftime. We always want to be the first to the bonus. We want to defend without fouling, and then we want to play to get fouled. They got to the bonus really fast in the first half. We never got there. And I know we were making shots, and so maybe it's marginalized at some point. I told the guys at halftime, guys, we got to hurry up and get to the bonus. We have to hurry up and get to the bonus. And we have to stop fouling because they were getting – they weren't scoring a lot of points at the free throw line, but they got to the bonus, which forces us to now as – I mean, it's, it's the 15th best offense in the country and first in the league. You're going to foul them. They have multiple pros on the team. And so it just puts us in a corner – and I thought we were better in that regard in the second half. How, how many? Uh, yeah, a, lo a lot better in the second half. 16 points in the second half and two in the first half. To do that, uh, you went a little bit more to the dribble penetration in the second mm -hmm. half. Was that? And how much did getting to the bonus early kind of help quell some momentum plays? Well, was a, uh, a you, you know this. It was a fast turn. We got home from. Missouri at whatever it was, 3 a.m. on Thursday. And our staff was phenomenal. Uh, they were way ahead of me as usual. But as we begin to meet on Thursday, the offensive group, the defensive group, the special teams, they, they were way ahead. And we delayed our typical two day before on Thursday. And I told the kids in the locker room in Missouri, guys, we got, I don't know anything about Tennessee. We haven't played them. It's, it, it is a mirror, so I have to learn it for good. Um, so we delayed the timing on that on Thursday. I thought the staff had distilled it perfectly, and we gave our guys a little bit more than we normally do. I thought they absorbed it very efficiently. We didn't practice, so it was just kind of let me show it. Let's walk through it. Let's write it down. So yesterday was our first rep of it. And from the very beginning, every breakdown deal that we were doing, they were spot on. And offensively, we made some unique adjustments that we've never done. And defensively, we did the same. So I think um, 15th best offense first in the SEC fifth best defense, second best in the SEC. And to your question from yesterday, so much attention to three, rightfully so. But them other guys will, if they play without three, they're more than good enough to beat us. And so we had to make unique adjustments that our staff was spot on with. Our guys absorbed it. And then as the game was going, those adjustments were – helpful and then we began to expand on it because the players were picking up on some of it and anytime that's happening I think that's a sign of great growth for your group what were some of those adjustments that you made well I don't want to say that because you know we play them again I, I'm not being a jerk but no, no, no. you understand Buzz uh, you know you 
it's I've a, never seen you wear a is that a sport coat or uh, leisure coat? Something like Saturday that. night for, coat. Uh, for for Christmas a couple of years ago, and she suggested I wear it. So. Well, she was right. <laughs> so I did. It looks nice. Thank you. Um, anyway, I was going to ask you. Um, you know, you said that you thought Tennessee was a team capable of winning the national championship, and y'all went out and, and and never trailed in this game. Um, was there any? Thing in practice or in the in the days recently that that gave you an indication that y'all are ready to play what's probably your best game of the year. No, I, I, honestly, um, I, I don't mean this sarcastically at all. Um, last Saturday we were planning to get to five hundred, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was a monumental effort just to win by one and we were uh we were off on Sunday and this particular 10-day stretch means we're going to work 10 days in a row so we were off on Sunday we worked Monday and Tuesday along with travel to play Wednesday we worked Thursday and Friday to play Saturday that means we're working tomorrow and Monday to play Tuesday when it shifts from Wednesday, Saturday to Tuesday, and two of those three are on the road, I think that's a lot. And I'm not complaining. That's just part of it. But we're four and four going to play at Missouri. We have enough quad three losses for anybody. So now Missouri becomes a bigger game than Florida. And it took literally all of us to have a chance to win against Florida by one. And we did some good things, I thought, at Missouri, even though it would be discounted outside of our group of us, you're supposed to win. Yeah, but there's nothing is supposed to happen. You have to make it happen. And then we get home Thursday morning and you're like, hey, um, they're a two seed right now. They're fifth in the net. They're fifth in Ken Palm. You could argue that they're a one seed. They have the player of the year on the team. They have a current Hall of Fame coach. And I'm not sure that three is the best prospect on their team. And we'll have to be perfect just to have a chance to win by one. So I don't think that, like, we don't have time to think of those thoughts because we're so consumed, just like when we wake up in the morning. The game on Tuesday is actually bigger than the game that we just played, even though That was so fun, and we're very thankful. So eat some pizza tonight and then wake up early tomorrow, and we have to figure out how we can win on Tuesday. Do you allow yourself to think about what a game uh, win over this, over that team, and uh, what it does for your NCAA tournament resume? No. We've we've had this conversation, not being a jerk. We've had this conversation like, well, I guess we didn't have it the first year because we were in – Nashville, when the tournament got canceled, we didn't have it uh, in our second year because you guys were on Zoom and we didn't play in February. And then when we were four and eight in conference play in year three, nobody was even talking about the NIT. And then uh, whatever we were, uh, when we played them last year, we were 12 and 12 and two when they were 11th in the country and we were still a seven seed. And so like I have literally said no to every possible distraction because I just think you're, you're on a hamster wheel and it doesn't solve anything. Andy has 33 rebounds the last two games. Just how big has he been for you? He's the DR Dennis Rodman. I've said it before. I mean, it's, That's what I wrote to him today on my game day note. I will never take for granted the opportunity of a lifetime to coach you. I'll never take it for granted. Um, What he does has nothing to do with who his head coach is. And not to take away the importance of rebounding that our staff gives to it. What he's doing has nothing to do with what we're talking about with rebounding. Like it's just... 
the reason why our defense is doing better is because we're finishing the possession with a rebound. Andy's rebound. <laughs> and the reason why our offense has a chance is because we're doing a better job of shooting predictable shots and we get an offensive rebound, Andy. And then we can manipulate the game pace-wise as fast as that was. No, so, so, so nine times we shot it and missed it, and he got it. And our offensive rebound percentage was below our average. So if he doesn't get nine, our team gets five. Uh, we, we're not winning. It's just uh, – Solo is growing up at a rate faster than most. Solo's on the same trajectory Four was on in the fourth semester of his college career. Four is – Four should have his jersey retired at senior day. It, it, we shouldn't wait. What Andy is doing, I think Andy leads the SEC in rebounding leads the nation in offensive rebounding. And if he keeps doing this sort of deal, like he's averaging distinctly more rebounds than points. Henry's back healthy. You can hear his voice from wherever you sit. That means he's rolling. And, and Boots, uh, whatever the question Olin always answered, uh, Boots played good. We won. I mean, it's just I don't want to take any of it for granted. Boots has played better than just good. It's 20-plus the last three games. He said nothing's changed. What do you think? That's my guy. That's my guy. I think uh, I think he processed all that transpired uh, as maturely as any good human being can. And I think he processed all that transpired as positively as anyone with incredible competitive character can. There was some shenanigans going on in Columbia <laughs> early, and I was like, ah, oh, that's great. And Rock goes, that's not great. I go, no, that's great, because Boots will hear it. We're good, baby. <laughs> that's well, Boots. Pause with uh... Few minutes left in the first half. Wade picks up his second foul. Yeah. Comes out of the game. Could have been an opportunity for them to come back, but you guys went eight minutes uh, with Tennessee not scoring at all. Yeah, I think uh, I think I should have said it. Mo's been through so much. Mo's five minutes and thirteen seconds against Florida. I understand he went 0-4, but he also drew three fouls. He got a huge defensive traffic rebound. And he changes the pace of the game. And without sounding silly, if four or boots can get a drink of water per half, it makes our team better. Mo was not great at Missouri. We've talked about it. He's watched it. I've been straight up with him. I th Mo was tremendous. And I'm not talking about that he scored six points. Mo's physicality, Mo's athleticism, Mo's speed. Mo's talent and Mo's ability to get fouled when he doesn't get spun around like a blender on defense, it's huge because we're fighting. And I, I thought H, H with a driving layup in the first half, H with the offensive rebound put back in the second half, played 13 minutes. Jace is playing out of his mind because he plays so hard. Anything that Mo gives us, anything that H gives us. And then I was mean to Wildens yesterday, and I actually thought today was the best Wildens has played since he's been at Texas A&M. Not his numbers. The physicality that he played with gave us a chance against zero. Gave us. A, I had to take Andy out. 11 and zero was just whipping his – whipping him. Got to put Wildens in. But – Six minutes for Wildens, huge relative to Andy, Henry, and Solo. We played big, our version of big, for how many minutes? How many minutes did we play with Solo at the three? However many minutes it was, 
is because of Mo and Wildens, and that changes our team. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I think we should do this before the game when my mind is fresh. Uh, just grateful for the, the students, grateful for those not in the end zones. Uh, Brad told me that it was above capacity. I'm not sure how that's allowed, but whatever that means, if we're hiding the true number, we really appreciate the environment. I thought I, can, I always come out for um, eight to ten minutes an hour before the game to take a picture with my family, and th there were students already in the upper level, and I thought the last six or eight minutes you could kind of feel it reverberate and read. All right, that's a wrap.